You know how a knight's tale starts off with we will rock you and it's anachronistic and it sets the tone for the film as a comedy and it kind of works in that film, at least it did for me? Turns out not every film should do that. I, I just got back from Penn and oh wow was that film garbage. If you want to skip the rest of the review, you, they were just going to give a rundown of what the hell happened, if I can actually remember, because I think part of my brain got fried while watching this stupid flick. Fuck me. I, I still haven't decided on a rating, but this is bad. This is horrible. So the movie opens. Y you see this woman walking through the... or running, hiding through the streets of London, and she looks like she's avoiding police officers and things like that, and she hops over a gate, and I don't mean like a gate that would be around a house, I mean like one that's 15 feet high, just hops right over it, and we find out a little bit later, as in like 20 seconds later, that this is Peter Pan's mother leaving him at the orphanage. Okay, first off, nowhere in any of those shots can we see her holding a baby, and even if she was holding a baby, how the fuck did she hop over that gate like it was nothing? And third, where the where did the bassinet come from that she, that he's in? Flash forward eleven or so years, and oh look, the Blitzkrieg is on, and yeah, this p takes place in the nineteen forties for some reason. Pretty sure Peter Pan took place in pre World War One or close to World War One, something like that. But he's of course in this orphanage, and it's being run by the most stereotypical curmudgeonly nun, like the Trunchable, who's of course hoarding the food, all the good food for herself, and giving the boys fuck, and she's just over the top. And is this film going to avoid any cliches at all? Here, here, I'll give it away now. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, so, of course, some bombing happens, and there's talk about how some kids have disappeared over the night, that they, oh, they've been adopted and gone to Canada. I'm Canadian. Then if he didn't know that. And why that's making me cringe right now. Uh, it's too early, too early. Peter gets caught, gets his hand whipped, and it's like, oh no, I'm gonna try to figure out where these boys are going. Like, okay, why do you care? And then it turns out the nun, the head nun, raises a pirate flag outside of the orphanage, which is somehow a signal for these pirates on a flying galleon, but there's more throughout the film. How are these things flying? They go down, they grab all the boys from the orphanage, pull them up in the pirate ship. <sighs> horrible CGI. In fact, there's horrible CGI throughout this entire thing, so I'm just going to mention that now. The CGI in this film is horrible. It's like watching a cartoon, but you but because it's fixed with the live action, and it's trying to pass itself off as live action, you can tell they fly off. For some reason, they cut to a war room full of women, which I do, I do believe that actually did happen during World War II, so... But they're coordinating the, the defense, so they send up the Air Force to take down what they think is this Luftwaffe ship. I'm probably mispronouncing that, my apologies. But they report it's a pirate ship. Why the hell am I watching fighter planes from World War II shooting at a flying pirate ship. What the fuck am I watching? Holy good God. So they get to Neverland, and this is where I... Is this Canada? That's when... I, I... This is the part that fried my brain. They float on this galleon into the middle of a mine, where it's full of pirate miners, and they start singing an a cappella version of Smells Like Teen Spirit. <laughs> what the fuck am I watching? Uh, and the, I, I hadn't heard about this before I went to go see it, and I thought, oh, they probably just, actors probably didn't know, but n no! Hugh Jackman walks out as Blackbeard, and he's singing the song along with them, and so we've already moved Peter Pan from pre-World War One, World War One era to World War Two, and now you've got songs from the seventies being sung by the pirates. I Turns out he's been kidnapping people from our world and bringing them to Neverland, so that they can mine essentially fairy dust because he's killed off the fairies, but apparently fossilized fairies 
They can mine it and then get fairy dust and I don't know. It's never really explained what it does, except a little later on, apparently, Hook uses it to rejuvenate himself, but I thought in Neverland that just being in Neverland made sure you didn't age. And There is no logic to this movie. It Everything just happens because. So Peter actually manages to find a bit of this, and he, some older miner steals it from him. P Peter says it's him, but of course they, everybody believes the older miner. So they kick him off a plank, and he, that's the first time he ends up flying. How does he end up flying after being pushed off a plank on a ship? How are, how are you having a happy thought as you fall to your death? I thought flying worked because you had happy thoughts. I don't fucking get it. Uh, so that's when he gets the fucking exposition in this film is horrible because, okay, Hook sees him flying and he brings him to his room and offers him some chocolate and then has him at sword point holding up his little pan flute that his mother left on him and then gives this bullshit story uh, essentially a chosen one narrative that, well, you know, a fairy and a princess got together and made a kid and that kid's gonna come back and be the one to defeat me. Well then, why the fuck are you just killing him right then if you think he's the one? Does it matter if he's not? You think he is? Kill him! You're the bad guy! Why the fuck are you letting him live? Anyway, for some reason he just throws him back in prison along with James Hook, who we saw a little bit earlier, but whatever. So Hook breaks them both out, and uh, they manage to steal one of the flying galleons. Again, no explanation for how these things are frickin' flying. I guess fairy dust, but they, they never actually state as much. They end up finding the native tribe, and I say native because it's a mix of all races. Uh, apparently the book, I haven't read the book, but the book is very non-specific about what races they are, so I know some people are complaining, oh, it's whitewashing them because it's uh, Mara Rooney as Tiger Lily. If you've got a problem with that, fine, I understand. I don't because this film has much fucking bigger problems than that, okay? Okay, so they explain the frickin' prophecy thing again. Ugh, like, uh, we know this. Why are you telling us this again? We already know. So they've got, Peter's got three days to fly to somehow signal to the fairies that they've gone into hiding. Apparently Hook tried to kill them, as I think I said earlier, but no, they've just gone to their own city. Then uh, they've got Smee actually ends up giving them away to Blackbeard, uh, so they were captured somehow, and series of events, they end up escaping, but not before uh, Hook, in order to save Tiger Lily's life, gives up the fact that they are guarding a map to the Fairy Kingdom. I forgot one thing. When the pirates come in and start attacking everybody, whenever they shoot one of the natives, they just explode into a powder. A cloud of powder. Powered smoke. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't know why the fuck it happens, but it fucking happens. I... I don't... This movie broke something in me. I... I... Uh, Hook, Pan, and Tiger Lily end up on some kind of makeshift raft. And they're floating down the river. They manage to escape the crocodiles. In fact, one of the crocodiles grabs Peter, pulls him under, but he's saved by... Three mermaids who all look like, and I'm going to mispronounce this name, and I apologize, Cara Devine, model turned actress, uh, the girl from Paper Towns. It doesn't say a word. They're all horrible. It's just her face on CGI mermaid bodies, and it looks fucking horrendously scary. They end up finding an abandoned pirate ship, which Hook somehow fixes up and says he's just going to fly back to our world. Again, somehow, Peter and Tiger Lily end up at, in this cave, supposed to be the entrance to the kingdom, but of course the pirates found the map. How do they know it's the map? How did they, as in Peter and Tiger Lily, get into this cave without noticing all the fucking pirates who are surrounding them? Oh, and of course, Peter's little pan flute, it's the key to the lock. Gee, I didn't see that coming. How unoriginal fucking bullshit. So they fly one of the galleons in and start shooting the fairies with flamethrowers, which somehow kills them. And then he's about to kill Tiger Lily and Peter, but then of course James Hook, the change of heart of course, comes in, crashes into the ship, and uh, his ship gets destroyed. Uh, a bunch of nonsense fighting. They, they briefly mention Tinkerbell. Of course, you have to have Tinkerbell in a Peter Pan story. Uh, Hook starts falling to his death after a fight with one of the big baddies. P 
Peter jumps down, saves him, of course, he can fly now. So it brings Hook back up, and there's a fight, and eventually Peter rallies the fairies, and for some reason the pirates forget they have the flamethrowers. They're not shooting them with the flamethrowers anymore, they're just being pushed off and killed or something. Suffice to say, all the pirates are dead, I guess, maybe. And then Peter has an emotional connection with the fairies who form an image of his mother. And uh, they go back and rescue a few more boys on Hook's new ship. And that's the film. And I, I don't fucking get this movie. It, I, don't, I still don't know quite where I'm going to rank it in my... It's going to make my year in top ten worst. But I don't know where. This movie hurt my brain. You might be able to watch it as a bad movie and enjoy it like that, but make no mistake, this movie's fucking atrocious. I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, I'm done. Talk to you folks later.